Alright, let's look at 3.3 .3 and 3.4, which are optimization problems. We're looking at various different word problems in, uh, that involve calculus. So, the first example, the sum of two positive numbers is 12. Find the two numbers such that the product of one and the cube of the other is a maximum. So what does this mean? Well, if you look at the underlying word, the idea you have to remember is we're only looking at positive numbers. So we can neglect, we can ignore any negative values. Now, the idea is we need to find a maximum. So let's make a let statement. Let x represent one number, and we let 12 minus x represent the other number. Why is that the case? Well, looking at the first statement up here, it says the sum of two positive numbers is 12. So if one is x, then the other one is going to be 12 minus x because the sum of x plus 12 minus x is going to equal 12. All right, now we need to know that the product of one and the cube of the other is a maximum. So we're taking a max, we take the product of one, so x times the cube of the other to give us the maximum. The other way to write this is if we cube the x and take 12 minus x is the other. So the goal here, whether we use this form or this form, is to answer this question. So we need a maximum, so I use a capital M to imply a maximum, and it's the product, the product of one, so something, product means multiplication, so it's something multiplied by the cube of the other. And that's what we have here. Whether it's in blue or in purple, this is what you're looking at. So we go ahead and solve this. Again, whether it's blue or purple, you solve it the exact same way. We set the derivative equal to zero. And we find the derivative using product rule. And we get the answer of 12 and 3. What this means is that when we take the product rule, we take the derivative of this times this, which is what we have here, plus this times the derivative of this. The derivative of this, you have to multiply by 3 times the derivative of the inside times the uh, base with one less exponent. And that's what happened here. You can expand it out, at least the second part I would expand that out. And what you have is two values here that you could find the value for x so that the product, so that the value, you'll have an answer of zero. The reason why we set the derivative equal to zero is we're finding a maximum. And remember that a maximum means that the derivative of the value is equal to zero. So we have x is equal to 12 and 3. Well, let's go on to the purple side and find that derivative. Will we get the same answers? Expand it this time, then set the derivative equal to zero, factor, and we get, huh, interesting, values of zero and nine. How come these two, although I told you in the beginning, were the same, in here when you look at them, they have different values. Why is that the case? Well, folks, let's continue on and see why, although these values are different, your actual final answers are actually going to be the same. Let's keep going. So basically, x represents one number, and the other number, if you think about it, remember that it's a sum of 12. If we have 12 as one of the numbers, then the other number is going to be 0, because 0 plus 12 gives you 12. If 3 is one of the numbers, then if we take and subtract 12, we'll get 9. So 9 plus 3 is 12. That's These are the two numbers that go together. Well, let's look over here in purple. The one number is 0. The other number is, oh, look, 12. And then also one of the numbers is 9. Oh, look, the other number is 3. Look, folks, when you look at all of this, each of these groupings, as we want to call them, or these ovals that it circled the answers, these are the answers that could possibly result. So which one of these will give us a maximum product? 
Well, zero times, uh, um, and that's what we have to find out. Well, if we have zero as one of the values, for example, x, okay, what would happen is if x was zero, the whole thing would be uh, zero. And if x was tw if x was 12, the whole thing would also be zero. So ultimately, guys, this is not going to work, and we're going to see why. If we sub x equals 12 in m in the blue section, we find out that the product is going to be zero, just like I talked about. If I sub x equals 3 in m, I get a value of 200, sorry, 2,187. Wow, look at that. So one of these values actually gives us a zero answer. One of these will give us 2,187. What that means is this is might be a local max, okay, or a min even, because remember, when we set the derivative equal to zero, we can't control whether it's a max or min, so we have to check the values. Now over here, if I do the same thing, and guess what, folks? Plug it in. Oh, look, you get the same maximums. Scary. Well, not really. You have to remember, first of all, when we set the derivative equal to zero, we can't control whether it's a max or min. So when we get these multiple values, we have to check those values to verify that there is an absolute max. Well, here is our absolute max, our 2,187. So therefore, the two numbers are 9 and 3. And whether we did it the purple way, which is this way, or we did it the blue way, the result, folks, is going to be exactly the same. And that's what we're looking at, is what are our values. And there are multiple ways to approach a lot of these problems. Again, I'm looking at mathematically sound solutions, and that's what the goal is. All right, next one. Example number two. Find the point on the line 3x plus 4y minus 25 equals 0, which is closest to the origin. So we're going to look at this question using calculus. So what that means is you've got some line that is connected. So the line that we're looking at is this line right here. And it is at what point is it closest to this origin? And that's what the key is. At what point is it closest to this origin? So you have a point on the line, which is x comma, 25 minus 3x over 4. Where did that come from? Well, folks, where it's a point on this line right here. If I isolate for y, okay, if I isolate for y, as you see here, what you'll see is that y is equal to 25 minus 3x all over 4. Well, that's our y value, so I can plug it in as our y coordinate. Our x is just x. And whatever our x is, we plug it in to find our y value. And that's the coordinates of any point on that line. Now, the origin point is 0, 0. So that's the blue dot that you see here. This blue dot is 0, 0. So that's our origin. And notice I changed the color of the line so that you notice that these coordinates are any point on this black line here. So what we need to do is minimize the distance. Closest to the origin means that we want to find minimize the distance. So what we have here is a right angle triangle. We could technically do a, a distance formula or we could use Pythagorean theorem to do this. I'm going to use the distance formula. The distance formula is basically you subtract the x's, so the change in the x squared plus the change in the y squared. And that's always for any formula for distance. So it's the square root of the change in x squared, so that's how delta, that would be known as delta x squared, plus the change in the y squared, so that's delta y squared, and you take the square root of that whole entire value. Well, we need to minimize this. In order to minimize it, we're going to have to take the derivative. We take the derivative of the distance and we set it equal to zero. We want to minimize it. So the goal here is that you take half of, so we're taking the derivative. So you take this half, bring it over to the other, to the front, 
Take the derivative of the inside, which is x squared, plus, and now be careful here, it's going to be 25 minus 3x over 4, all squared to the power of negative half. What that means is here we haven't done the derivative of the inside. All we did is we took the base and subtracted 1 to the exponent, and now we're going to take the derivative of the inside, which is 2x plus, now, Take the derivative of this. Be careful. We take, bring the 2 in front. Take the derivative of the inside, which is just negative 3 over 4x, negative 3 over 4, and then times the inside to the power of 1. Let's go back. So we look at this again. When we took the derivative, we took the derivative of this, which is 2x, and that goes here. The derivative of 25 minus 3x over 4 all squared is 2. Take the derivative of the inside times the base minus 1 exponent, and that's the answer. Now what do we do with this? Well, let's look at the same question again. We're just looking at the derivative, repeating what I just wrote. And what do we do with this? Well, folks, that's all the work there, but I'm just going to just rewind a little bit so that you can see what happened. Once we get those answers that we're looking for, we now can bring everything so that things are in their proper place, whether it's in the numerator or the denominator, simplify, and you get an answer of three. X equals three. Where did that come from? That just came from this part here. The denominator doesn't play a factor in terms of when it equals zero, except in terms of restrictions don't have to worry about that because this is a positive number plus a positive number. Take the square root of a positive number remains positive. We're not going to get a zero down here, folks. And so unless, well, even when x is zero, this is not going to be zero. So we don't have to worry too much here. But here, if I plug in three in here, I will get a positive number. So we don't have to worry about that. But the ultimate goal here is 25x minus 75. You find out that x equals three. We sub it into the y coordinate, we find out it's 4. So the point closest to the origin is 3, 4. All right, let's look at another solution on the next video. See you in the next video. Take care.